Okay, we are now recording. Okay, so welcome everyone to uh, this January 31st meeting of the Energy and Climate Action Committee. Um, remembering that our goal here is to try to help speed along the energy transition and greening of Amherst um, by giving advice to the town and doing a lot of outreach. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started with the today's agenda. First thing on the agenda is just to look at the minutes, but actually the very first thing always needs to be to get a minute taker. Uh, so Steve, how do you feel about, no, Steve's not here yet. Um, Laura, Jesse, Don, I think it might be back to you, Don. No. I mean, I'm okay. I just did it. Um, Oh, wait, we're not all on the list anymore. Oh, but we don't want to get, oh, Laura's here. There's Laura. Laura. <laughs> Laura, how would you like to be our note taker today? Um, yes, I can do that today. Okay, cool. And we have to, and next week we'll have the two new members on the list. So the first thing we always do is, is, is pick a note taker. And we usually just go down the list of members to whoever's next. Um, so come prepared to take notes. Um, but Laura will do it today. Okay, so with that, the first thing on the agenda is always to look at last uh, week's minutes or the two weeks minutes from two weeks ago, and I can bring them up. Um, is that them? That's them. Um, let me go ahead and share my screen. I can find everyone. Although hopefully everybody has looked at them beforehand. That's the idea. We nonetheless always pop them up for a moment. Okay, so there are some minutes. I'll just scroll through them slowly. If there are any comments, corrections, questions. On pace updates. So Stella is not here this week, so we won't be following up on that. Um, there was a follow-up to do on that that we'll put off for a couple weeks. Update on CO or a uh, report from COP28. And a very exciting CCA coming up. Any, and if there's no comments, then we look for a motion to accept the minutes. A second. Um, I can second it. Yep. Oh, was there a motion? I'll motion then. <laughs> okay, and a second. And a second, oh, that's fine. Okay. okay, and then I need you to stop sharing, Laurie. Okay, so right. Everyone on screen. Stop share. Okay, great. And then uh, via voice vote in no particular order, uh, whether or not you approve the minutes. Goldner? Yes. Breger? Yes. Allison? Yes. McElrath? Yes. Issing? Yes. Drucker? Yes. Okay, minutes are approved. Okay, the minutes have been approved. Um, <clears throat> Next, there's always an opportunity for public comment, and we do have a couple of members of the public. Sarah or Martha, do you have a comment for us today? Sarah does. I'm allowing her to speak, yeah. and Sarah, you can go ahead and unmute. Hi, friends. This is Sarah Ross. I know several of you. Nice to see you all. Thanks for doing this work. Lori, thanks for chairing this committee and this important work. Um, I'm a resident, grew up here, and I'm on the uh, part of a nonprofit called Undaunted K-12 that's focused on helping schools embrace climate solutions and be um, part of the change we're looking to see in the world. We're a national nonprofit, but I'm right down the road from you here in Amherst. Uh, and I wanted to come to ECAC today and let you know about a new initiative that we're working on statewide, but also with folks in Amherst around um, working with our school committee and school board to introduce a climate resolution for the district itself to embrace climate action. Um, 
you know, you, you all know that there are many pieces to this puzzle, but one of them is our schools and uh, our regional schools in particular end up kind of falling out of, uh, you know, municipal action since they're their own body. And so we're working with Sunrise Amherst as kind of the anchor in a coalition of local residents. And we'll be working to um, uh, draft a, a climate change resolution for the school board to adopt. Uh, and, and then, you know, hoping to support them in implementing that. And that resolution, you know, might cover everything from, um, you know, electrification of the, the busing fleet and the HVAC and building, installing solar. It could also include curriculum. You know, other, other cities across the country have included food and, you know, career and technical education. So it um, has the opportunity to be a broad, you know, kind of resolution covering lots of areas. And so we want to let this committee know about that very nascent work. And, um, you know, I, I didn't give you a heads up as a agenda item, but would love to maybe have as a future agenda item a conversation about how members of this committee might want to be involved in that work, support that work, or just what thoughts you have for us as we shape that work going forward. Sarah, thank you very much. That's very interesting to hear about. Um, I suppose since you're working with um, Sunrise, uh, you said you're working with Sunrise Amherst, right? Yes. Um, you probably already know about the Amherst Climate Action and Ad Ad Cl Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan, the CARP, because um, that might be something to draw on in in putting together a resolution for the for the school board schools to consider. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, um, you know, if you've seen these resolutions before, they start with a bunch of whereases and yeah. they get resolved and we're going to do this thing. And so part of the whereases might be referencing, you know, the, the CARP and referencing our state, our state goals, referencing our national goals, referencing the impact on young people and their mental health. You know, lots of things will show up in those whereases. And certainly the great work that this committee has done to come up with that plan will be one of the whereases. Right. That's great. That's that's fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Other questions? Um, Sarah, I just wanted to comment that um, one of the things we're going to be talking about tonight is we're, we've launched a new community sustainability dashboard. And when you start getting this effort up and running, um, please let me know. Please contact me because um, there may be ways I can get that information up on the on the dashboard as well. What kind of information are you thinking about, Stephanie? Well, so this is ways in which the community can participate and help. And so, um, you know, just e or even it's just informational for folks. Um, if you haven't been to our uh, sustainability dashboard, we had a press release that just went out that has the link to the dashboard. Um, oh, so you can take a look at it, but it uses the, the CARP as kind of the framework. Um, but again, we can talk offline about this, but just there's ways in which I can help get that information on the town's website if it would be useful to you all as you do this. Yeah, no, we're we're at the, that's very appreciated. Thank you, Stephanie. We're at the very beginning stages and the first step, you know, in this process is to really build a team. So while I mentioned Sunrise Amherst is kind of the anchor tenant, you know, we, we have aspirations to make this a, you know, multi-generational, really diverse coalition of folks that are interested in having our schools become more climate resilient and to decarbonize. And so one of the things that, um, you know, I, I don't know whether that's appropriate, but, you know, there's a forum for folks to join this coalition. So the Amherst Coalition will be part of a statewide. So we, Undaunted, the nonprofit that I'm a part of, is partnering with Mass Audubon on this. So it's a joint venture between Mass Audubon and Undaunted to do this statewide. So we have teams emerging in Lowell and in, you know, other, other parts of the state. Um, and so building a team is the first step and we would love Stephanie, your help and others help in, we would love to have some of you on the team um, as, as part of this effort representing the work in Amherst. Okay, that's great. Thanks okay. again, Sarah. Thanks. And good luck. I hope that I Thank hope you. we find ways to work together on that. Um, all right, next on the agenda is any more public comment, first of all, Martha, no. All right, so in that case, let's spend a moment introducing ourselves again um, and introducing and getting to know our new members, uh, Michael and Tony. So 
Stephanie, how do you think we should do this? Just go around and say a few words about each of us? Um, yeah, well, or maybe let, um, I know Michael was here last time, maybe let Tony have an opportunity to introduce himself and give his background and then ECAC can quickly just sort of say who you are, where you're from, maybe a quick background. Okay, so Tony, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Tony. I'm very happy to be here. Excited to see what I can contribute. Um, I'm a three-year Amherst resident. I'm a PhD student at UMass. My work is an interdisciplinary approach to the ecological entanglement um, of social behaviors and marginalized bodies um, as a context for developing and implementing green world initiatives and environmental justice initiatives. Um, I'm also a member of Elevate, which is an on-campus interdisciplinary graduate cohort of people that specialize in energy transition and um, clean energy implementation. And I'm hopeful that my position here will also find a way to bridge those that organization with the town in hopes of helping Amherst become more green. Thank you. That's great. I'm familiar with Elevate and uh, I'm really glad we have you here. <laughs> Thank you for, for being willing to join us. And I think, Michael, you should introduce yourself again, too, because I don't think Tony met you, and I'm not sure who else wasn't here last week. Um, yeah, there may have been, uh, I think, uh, is everyone here? Uh, yeah, week? I think I've met everyone. everyone. Well, it's go ahead and to... introduce yourself again anyway. That's it, This is the more formal moment to do that. Last week was sort of uh, ad hoc, so. Anyway, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, my name's Michael Issing, um, also a fellow three-year resident of Amherst, uh, similar to Tony. Um, <clears throat> moved here from the Phoenix, Arizona area before uh, before moving to Amherst. Um, I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, I work in the realm of energy efficiency, uh, building optimization, um, and kind of working on energy consulting for commercial, industrial, residential properties um, and, and, and buildings. So, um, work in the private sector, uh, <clears throat> but definitely interested in the experience in kind of the government education sector uh, as well. But yeah, excited to basically you know apply my knowledge in, in in energy and engineering and how we can help you know or how I can help uh, facilitate and work with the Amherst community on you know decarbonizing, creating a, a more green community in Amherst. And thank you. Glad to have you here too, Michael. Um, so we should probably each say a little bit about ourselves. Why don't we, Stephanie, why don't we start with you and just go for, for Tony and Michael's sake, a uh, few words about each of us. Go ahead. Sure. Um, so welcome, Tony and Michael. I know we met uh, during the interview process, but I'm the director of sustainability. I've been with the town since 1997, so I've been here a long time. Um, and I'm based uh, currently out of the conservation department, but also we're working to make sustainability potentially its own department. Um, so I'm very happy to have you both be part of this group. Um, it's a great group, glad to have you. Um, Dwayne? Yeah, hi. Um, welcome, Tony and Michael. Great to have you. Uh, Dwayne Breger, uh, I'm I mean, you're 20 plus years in Amherst. Um, and um, I'm uh, at UMass. Uh, I'm an extension professor and direct the clean energy extension at the university. Um, I have faculty at, in environmental conservation. Um, Tony, good to know your connection with Elevate. I'm a affiliated faculty, I believe, um, with the Elevate program. Uh, so great to have that connection. Look forward to seeing you on campus as well. Um, and um, I'll say that I also, prior to coming to UMass uh, in 2015, um, I worked for the State Department of Energy Resources for 13 years, um, working in uh, heading up their renewable energy division there. Thanks, Dwayne. Don? Yeah, hi, Tony and Michael. I'm, I'm, my name is Don Allison. My wife and I moved to Amherst from Washington, D.C. in 1988. So we've been here a real long time. Um, we have four kids who all went through the Amherst school system and are now all over the place. I I'm a lawyer. I don't have any, well, 
other than defending General Electric and a power plant operator in my previous incarnation, I don't have a lot of, I have a lot of experience with power plants. If you, I know lots about power okay. plants. Um, but other than that, I'm simply a lawyer and I enjoy being on this group. And uh, Laura? Yeah, hi, Tony. Hi, Michael. Um, really happy to have you both here. Um, Laura Drucker, I'm one of the original ECAC members here with Dwayne and then Steve and Jesse, who you'll meet next time. Uh, we were all part of the original crew that started in 2019, I think. Um, but I've been in Amherst, it'll be 10 years this year, which is sort of crazy to, to think about. Um, moved up in 2014 from the Washington DC area as well, where I was working for an environmental NGO called the World Resources Institute. Um, I moved up here to take a job as the director of sustainability at Amherst College. And I did that for about five years. And now I'm back in the NGO space working for a company called Ceres, um, which is based in the Boston area. Um, and we work sort of supporting shareholder advocacy um, on climate action and, and companies. My expertise is in like life cycle assessment, carbon accounting, um, science-based targets. I'm also the vice chair of the technical council for the science-based targets initiative, which is an initiative that sets kind of the standards for which companies should be setting science aligned greenhouse gas reduction targets. Um, I had two kids, both at Wildwood Elementary and I think that's it. Okay, thanks, Laura. And I'm Lori. I uh, came up here in 2008 to be a professor of physics at UMass, where I still am. Um, but a few years ago, I got interested in, well, getting, getting up there in age and thinking, what am I going to do as my retirement job? And I've always been an environmentalist. I wanted to get more involved in it. So I've been training as an energy electrification coach, and I've been involved with the Energy Transition Institute at, at UMass and got involved with uh, this group a couple of years ago. So I'm, you know, this is ramping up to eventually do this full time as a quote unquote retirement job. <laughs> so um, I'm very happy to finally be and very heartened by all of the grassroots efforts I see ongoing to make this energy transition actually happen. Um, I also have an interest in science policy, so I've sort of been coming at it from, from both ends. Uh, and I'm much more impressed with what I see going down, going on from the bottom up than I am from what's going on from the top down. So um, I'll leave it at that. Okay, and thanks again for joining us, Tony and Michael. Um, yeah, yeah, it's nice to meet everyone officially. We'll see. Okay, uh, let's move on to updates. Um, okay, uh, I think Dwayne, you're on first. Um, updates on the solar bylaw and, and uh, Laura, maybe. Yeah, uh, <laughs> um, don't want to sound like a broken record week after or every two weeks or so, but uh, um, unless Stephanie has any additional news, we're not really expecting too much action on the bylaw. It's out of our hands. Uh, the, okay. this, the, I mean, the solar bylaw working group is, I presume, yeah. formally disbanded um because right. uh, where our work is done uh uh obviously we're interested in in um providing any serving as an as a um sounding board or anything else for the uh for the town and the town council as they look through it um but um there's no uh update on on any of the content um, yeah. i'm not sure if there's been any movement on the um procedural aspects but stephanie could inform us on that Yes, Stephanie, especially for our new members, maybe you could give us a little overview of, of where things are now. And this, so the solar bylaw is in progress. There's a link, you can look at it and read it. Um, and I think comment on it at this point, um, or maybe not yet. At some point, ECAC may have comments on it, but I think the time isn't quite yet. Why don't you give us a little overview, Stephanie? And Sure, so we yeah. had a group of residents who, um, represented different committees. So there was a member, Duane, represented uh, the ECAC. We had uh, Laura Pagliarulo representing the Conservation Commission. Um, we had another member representing um, the water supply uh, group. And then we also had another member representing, um, who was the fourth committee planning, planning. 
planning. planning. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, and then we had three ad hoc community members uh, who had scientific backgrounds or and or uh, research related backgrounds uh, that were a part of this working group. And we met for longer than we were supposed to <laughs> for over, I would say it was over a year um, to develop a draft bylaw. And there was a lot of community participation. There was a lot of opportunity for bringing in experts um, and various backgrounds, some related to forestry, some related to agriculture, um, some related to conservation. So we had folks come in, talk to the group, um, and then they drafted the bylaw using other bylaws as the model, primarily um, bylaws that were, they tried to sort of focus on those with the kind of in this area, but also using other templates from, you know, from UMass and from others as well. So um, I think, you know, in the end, I think they put together a pretty solid draft. Um, so that draft got passed to the town council so that, well, the town manager and the town council so that they could do further refinement of the bylaw. So the community resources committee is likely to um, take it up at some point and we'll look at it and probably um, open it up for some more comment and drafting and refining. And th that will be an opportunity for folks to weigh in when we know that that's happening. If you all want to weigh in, you can certainly have a look at the the draft and, and do so at that time. Um, but it's, it hasn't happened yet. So I'll just keep you informed when it when it does. And I think the link to the draft is certainly in some of our older minutes or packets. Um, I'm and I not... could just send it to you. I can, yeah. I'm making a note to myself to send. We've certainly been sent it before, but with new members, maybe it's good to send it again. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would be appreciated. Sure, I'll send it. Making a note, okay. And this is in regards to, you know, where uh, zoning essentially around solar arrays, around solar, you know, where solar can be sited. Um, and it really was an enormous amount of work done on it. And Duane actually has also been running a forum on, on solar um, development, on solar in general, uh, through UMass that has been extremely informative that um, if folks don't know about, they should. There's recordings of the, of the first first set, and I think there's another set of workshops coming up, yes? Uh, to be determined, uh, but yeah, there's recordings of four, our, our four sessions yeah. on our website, the Clean Energy Extension, uh, just on the on the AMR solar bylaw, zoning bylaw. Uh, do keep in mind that it, it, it is applicable, the, the bylaw is applicable to large scale solar. It's yeah. not about residential or rooftop solar, it's about, um, 250 kilowatts and above, I think was the threshold, but generally projects that would be more ground mounted. <clears throat> okay. Um, so if there's nothing else on solar to talk about now, then uh, Stella's not here today. So there was going to be a follow-up on the letter that was, we, we had published a letter in the Gazette about idling laws and about reminding people they're not supposed to be idling their cars. Um, and especially in school areas, they shouldn't be idling their cars in the winter for more than a minute out of every 15 just to keep it warm. Um, and Stella was going to take that letter and send it to different other groups, uh, educational organizations, parent-teacher organization, and stuff like that in Amherst. And I don't know if she was going to give us an update, but since she's not here, we'll put that off till next time. Um, and Don. Yeah. Well, what is what pace is and for the for the new members and uh, give us an update sure um the pace is a, a for the new members pace is a financing program um for uh well it started out for basically commercial um and multifamily uh projects where there were all sorts of incentives to do either retrofitting or you know, or, or or an overhaul uh, of in connection with the project. It's been extended to new construction, um, and uh, we've had some trouble getting guidelines out of uh, mass development, which uh, basically runs the uh, application and uh, and approval process. Um, the program was modified, as as I indicated gosh, over, I guess over a year ago now, um, in the summer, uh, for the purposes of uh, extending it to new construction. 
in any event, where we are is trying to get guidelines out of mass development so that we can put together some sort of a program for uh, developers and businesses here in, in Amherst to uh, it, it, the unique financing piece of it. And I don't want to get down in the weeds is, is that it uh, it's an assessment. It's like a real estate tax assessment to pay back um, the, the loan you get. So it runs over a number of years. It runs with the land um, as, about, as opposed to being a particular note mortgage that runs to a particular party. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it, if we can ever get it going and, and there haven't been a lot of successful projects in the area, but we did hear about one in Greenfield, um, that uh, I don't know where it stands now, but at the time there was a lot of excitement about it in any event where we are was Stephanie was attending the, um, Manas Municipal Association conference a week and a half ago, um, where she was going to once again, uh, meet with or or hope to meet with uh, individuals uh, at, at Mass Development who who run the program so we could get some in to finally get up the ladder to learn something about, you know, how the implementation of these new guidelines was, was going to occur. Um, she got a name. <laughs> you want me to jump in? <laughs> Go ahead, Stephanie. I will say, so uh, one thing that Don and I did do prior to the change in the guidelines was that we were trying to secure someone from mass development to give an information session for the business community um, and not just in Amherst, but kind of regionally. And we had reached out to the regional chamber of commerce and they were interested in holding and sponsoring that event. Um, however, with the change in the guidelines, when we reached out to mass development, they said, now's not the time because we're changing. So we don't want to give out a whole bunch of information that's going to be different by the time people want to implement. Um, so we put it on hold, which is why we were waiting. And I did, in fact, make a connection with someone at the MMA conference, and I did get a business card, but I haven't called them yet. So I will be following up. Um, hopefully tomorrow, actually, is a good day for me to to see if I can connect with them. Um, but they have updated the guidelines, so hopefully we'll be able to um, circle back to trying to schedule this event with the chamber. Yeah, in the way of a little history, even before the change, um, you know, this is a pretty exciting, this is the sort of financing thing that has to happen if the energy transition is going to happen on a wide scale. It was pretty exciting, but the fact of the matter was there weren't that many examples. We were just trying to get one example in town. I think there's one, was there one building in Northampton, I think, that used it? It's the one, there's the one in Greenfield. Carol Greenfield. Collins Greenfield. came and gave us a presentation. That's right. It's Greenfield. Sorry, I, I was confused. Yes, we got and we got a presentation on that one. But they're few and far between. So um, there's a lot of work to be done on this, and we're chomping at the bit to do something. So if you need some help, Stephanie, making phone calls or you know let let us know. Let me know. Um, maybe Don can help out. But whatever needs to be done to get this going would be great. Um, that's one we've been sitting on a while, you know, waiting for it to the happen. biggest obstacle, just finding the right information or the right contact. Finding the right information and then connecting it to somebody who's interested in making use of it, right? Who's who's planning a big retrofit, and it, it's a, it's a problem of they have to be early enough in the process that they're willing to consider this, right? In which case it's hard to find them. If they're too late in the process, it's easy to figure out who, who's doing these big retrofits, but they've already right. got their architect involved and they're, you know, they're done with their planning. Um, so it's, it's a little hard to, to find them at the right time, I think, and, and get folks interested. Um, and then there's the problem of the getting the rule straight. <clears throat> All right. So if they're if we're done with the updates, <coughs> excuse me. The next thing to talk about is um, the educational series uh, regarding solar on the built environment. So we had a um, a uh, a presentation last time when I wasn't here. I did I did watch the meeting um, asynchronously, um, and I understand it, it was not terribly well attended. Uh, so I wanted to suggest that as we continue doing this, I know 
I know Stephanie is without, you know, we, we had a bunch of people leave the town, right? So uh, I think Stephanie, you're without the usual folks who do the social media work and the, and the publicity work. Um, so I think we're gonna have to step in for that um, and make sure whatever we plan to do next, we get a flyer really quickly and we get it distributed to within our networks. I mean, I'll send it to the Gazette, I'll post it on Facebook, you guys should too. Um, let's do what we can to get the word out. Uh, these things do stay on YouTube and people do tend to listen to them later, but it's nice if we can get a few people actually at the meeting. So. Yeah, um, that helps with asking questions. Yeah. Q and A is way more interesting when people are there. <laughs> so, yes. um, I will say too, that, um, we can just use the last flyer and just kind of change it up because it's also on solar. So, okay. You know, so we could just change is... the information. So do we have somebody coming in two weeks? So, yeah, we have Sunbug coming Sunbug. on the 14th and they are going to present on um, EV charging stations and also battery storage. EV charging stations and battery storage. So it's everything you wanted to know about EV charging stations and battery storage for your home and car. I believe so. That yes. sort of thing. Yeah, I'll okay. double, I just want to clarify with them, but but I, I can just easily update the last flyer. Can you do that as soon as you Tomorrow. possibly can and then just send it to us? Yep. And we've got two weeks to get the word out. Yep. So um, as soon as that comes out, you guys, we're not allowed to meet. You know, we can't remind you all that we can't exchange emails back and forth as a group outside of this meeting. But when you get this poster, you know, this flyer, you'll know what to do with it, right? Um, send it to your contacts, post it on your social media. Um, you know, if you have a mailing list you belong to, if you have a neighborhood group you belong to, um, send it to them, let, let people know about this. Um, and we'll see if we can get a few more folks. Go ahead, Dwayne. Um, is there, I think Stella may be our best connection, but in terms of um, uh, outreaching it to the schools, um, not only for the the kids, but it often if it can get into their packet of stuff to show to your mommy and daddy, <laughs> they can, they might be interested in attending, um, or or you know. So I, it just seems like an audience that we might try to an outreach mechanism we might try to reach out to as well. But I'm not uh, sure. Yeah, I can, I can ask Angela. Mills is the executive assistant to the town manager. She'll she'll help me get it out and she will definitely get it to the schools. Oh, cool. If okay. I ask her, um, she has all the contacts for everybody. So yeah, getting it into a school newsletter or something like that. Not I think nowadays most things go out by email to parents. So um which is better because um it's easier to distribute. They don't have to make a thousand copies of it, you know. Right. Yeah. So every basically every Friday we get a letter a post in this parent thing um for, it's posted by w westmoreland um and it yeah. usually is a letter from superintendent slaughter and then below it has community events and things like that so i think yeah. you can get something to debbie probably won't get on it for this week but for the next week um uh... Yeah, okay. So uh so Laura, you wanna be responsible for getting it to Debbie then? Um, I think Stephanie said she was send, gonna send it oh, to um Angela. And if it but if happy to help Stephanie if Angela okay. would prefer that I send it. Yeah. Sure. I'll ask her. Okay. Maybe... I think she just has an email list that it just everything goes out to everybody at once. Sorry, Laurie. No, I'm just wondering if there's some way for us to coordinate without meeting is there some way for us to just uh, send an email indicating who we've sent the thing to so that we're not duplicating effort does that make sense is that or is that Anybody can email you could just email me yeah okay and then what do i do with that i can send an individual email to someone asking them to okay just send it to me and then i'll if, if i don't see debbie's name on there somewhere <laughs> you know, if I don't see the Gazette on this somewhere, I'll, I'll take care of the Gazette, I guess. I don't, I'm not sure how to do well, that, but I'll figure it out. So, Lori, I can, that's what I'm saying is if I give it to Angela, she has one big PR 
list that she sends it to and it goes out to everybody. So I can, she basically can do pretty much what Brianna had done. The only difference is that Angela wouldn't do the social media posts. Okay. Then I can get it to IT to do the social media post. Okay. But we should, we should also be doing that. I think, I think that's a big part of what ECAC should be doing is outreach around these sorts of things. So users, well, I'm thinking more you. like the people that, you know, yeah. you know, like the, the paper and stuff we can do, like we, we, we are internally, it's an easy one button click for, and it goes oh. to everybody. All I right. think what you want to do are the networks of folks that you have within the community that, you know, organizations, that kind of thing. That's who we want to, reach like sunrise or you know other groups okay okay good idea i can certainly send to uh, local energy advocates um i'm not so connected with sunrise but uh, but uh, andra is and we can write to andra and ask her to no i can do that we don't need oh. that right to andra. okay all right all right Good. Okay, in that case, I just asked that folks send me a quick note and let me know who you sent it out to so I, I'll fill in any gaps. All right, anything else on that item five? If not, we are on to item six, which is the new sustainability dashboard, yay. <laughs> I am so very pleased to announce that we now have our community dashboard up and running. So if you just bear with me one moment, I will share my screen and, share and give you a little tour. And I think you also should be able to find it, Amherst Mass Sustainability Dashboard. If you use Google Amherst Mass Sustainability Dashboard, it should pop right up. But yes. I'm going to share my screen so that people can, um, Sorry, I'm just moving things around so that people can um, hopefully take a look at this and um, be able to navigate it a little bit themselves. So, so when you first go to the dashboard, this is the page that you will see. And as I mentioned earlier, I believe to Sarah, the dashboard is broken up mainly by the components of our CARP. So when you go down, you will see that the sectors are all listed here. So there's governance and communications, buildings, renewable energy, and then land use and natural systems, transportation and infrastructure. I'm not gonna go through every single one of these, but I do just wanna use one to illustrate the components of each page. So you can um, navigate right from this main um, link to the rest of the page, or you can actually go to each section. So I'm going to just use this link. And so it shows those, those other three categories that were under the main link are right here and they're all below. So each one is below. So there's just a little bit of information, a little bit of background or a, like a little factoid for each sector, um, that's, that is introduced here. And then there's these three sections um, that have something about, you know, what we're doing, um, a project that we might be working on. And then there's a little link here for what you can do. So this is the way that residents can get engaged in what we're doing. So, um, so the first, we just talk about engaging the community and it's our introduction to our lovely ECAC. And um, I, one thing that I really wanted to make uh, sure was that our our committee was represented. So originally there was just some, you know, photo graphic from the web that was just kind of like a generic photo. And I was like, I really want us to have the people who do the work represented. So, um, and we can change this, like we can keep this up for a while. We can change it to um, a more updated photo of the group, maybe perhaps the, um, photo from last year's sustainability festival. I know that there was one that I think somebody took, uh, which I couldn't find, I didn't have it, but if someone has it, maybe we can, you know, update that, you know, six months from now. So we have the ability to sort of change the images and can change the content. Uh, I'll be working with 
Kim Lundgren Associates is the organization that we um, contracted with to develop the site. So they did a great job. So here we have uh, from our education series, people can actually just click on this link and watch some of our education series videos. Um, another one on the heat pumps, weatherization. So again, links to our education series. And then um, we were just talking about what happens here. Uh, we wanted to talk about the MVP program and projects and the work that we did through MVP and what that's about. So there's a link um, about the program, but then also I'll show you there's links to reports. Um, and then, you know, how people can best prepare for emergencies in the event of climate, um, climate weather events, severe weather events and then ways people can get involved. So we can like maybe just link here, you know, so what you can do to get ready for, you know, the winter time. Um, let's see. Uh, and here, um, where we have our emergency alerts. So people can click on to see where the emergency alerts are. Um, and then let's see. And then if we go up to the top, um, we have a link directly to the action plan. So this is just a little introduction to our climate action plan and sort of breaks down information about it, um, gives some information, and then um, there'll be a link to the plan I'll show you at the end. But what I really love is this actually breaks down each category, gives you some very specifics to our targeted actions. So I, what I really love about this site is that you can really spend some time getting lost <laughs> in the site and delving into the information. Um, again, this just takes the ways to get involved from each of the, each of the separate sectors. It kind of populates them in one spot. So if somebody wanted to, they could just go here and get all the information that's already populated in the other sectors, but they could just quickly get information going here. And then I asked to make sure that we had something that had all of our reports in one place so that people don't have to go hunting all over the website to find them. So um, we have our um, summary of findings from the MVP process. Um, this is one of the documents that kind of was like an initial document that led to us developing the climate action plan. Then leading to page, so, sorry, sorry, how did you get to that page? Oh, so this is under reports. Under reports, but so reports. reports. So if you click on reports, where's reports? That's what I'm trying to find. at the very top of the can you can you look at my yeah, screen was, that I'm sharing? Yes. If you look up at the top the menu bar here oh, at the very oh, top. The menu bar. There it is. Got it. Yep. So reports and all of the reports are here. So we have our MVP report. Great. We have our CARP. We have the um the inventory that oh. we just had our uh that we had our intern do back in 2016, which was the baseline emissions data. And then we have our um, solar report that was done. Um Oh, by GZA, fantastic. and then we have our solar site suitability analysis that was done. Um, we have the feasibility assessment, which is actually the tool. So people can actually um, link on that and actually have access to the tool as well. And the town's master plan, as well as the state. We So we moved into some of the state plans as well. Mm -hmm. So that way, this is kind of like a one-stop shop for the reports that people would be most interested in. I think one of the other ones that we need to include is probably Melissa Hoffer's climate report. So we'll probably add that as well. So anyway, so this is kind of, um, like I said, a one-stop shop. Uh, so there's a lot of information here. You know, the dashboard is kind of the the main um you know, sort of the main featured aspect of this where you can really delve down and 
get into, um, you know, more information and more actions. And I think the one thing that we really wanted to talk about when we, or that we did talk about when we were developing the site was just how to make this a place where people can find out the things that they can do. Because people are often saying, well, what can I do? How can I make a difference? So this is a place where people can go and get some of that information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like scheduling a free home energy audit through Mass Save, Mass Save takes you right to Mass Save mm -hmm. to be able to do that. So it's very, I, I think it's actually fairly um, easy to navigate. I think, you know, it's it's a lot of information, but really, you know, this at the very, very top, this, um, you know, menu uh, of items at the top is really kind of like, it's really these four sections. It's the dashboard, the action plan, ways to get involved in reports are kind of like the four main um, links of information. So it's pretty user-friendly. There's a lot here. It's very rich with a lot. Um, and we're very, I, I think, I personally think they did a fantastic job. And so we have a, um, we'll be assigning a, uh, an, an additional agreement with them to do more upkeep and um, we still have some ARPA funding at least for next year. There's a few things that they can do that I've asked them to include, which is like they'll uh, have a calculator tool that will be available for people for home assessments and EV charging. So we'll work over the year on creating and developing that tool to be available on the site. Um, we're also looking for um, them to help us, uh, you know, on the back end with loading more data and updating the site. Um, I'll, I've got some training. I'll have more trainings on how to do that as well. Um, but, you know, we'll have the opportunity to, to add more over time. This isn't static. It's obviously going to be evolving over time. Um, so there's a lot of potential here and, It'll be, I'll be interested in hearing, hearing more feedback from the group as you all have time to navigate through it and have a look and um, give me some feedback about more that you'd like to see and, um, you know, how, what you think. I'm, I'm really thrilled that it's, that it's up, Stephanie. I can't tell you how nice it is to have all that information. I was poking around with it a little bit over the weekend. Um, the one question I have is, there are things coming online this year, like the CCA and maybe the heat pump program. Um, how do we front and center, and even the PACE program, once we get our heads around that, right? How do we, how does that fit in here? Where would it go so that people can find it easily and it find may how not, to get involved? Yeah, I mean, for some of that, you know, it'll be on here, but that's not gonna be the primary way that we get information out about those programs. I mean, okay. that's going to be news releases, workshops, events, you know, okay. that there's, it's got to be way more than just having it on the website. Sure. So yeah. it'll live here because it's an e easy place to link to, okay. um, but it's not, you know, it's not going to show up on the very first page, gotcha. but we will be doing press releases and things that will link people to coming here. Okay. So, cool. and there'll be social, I mean. And the information will be there somewhere. Yeah, right. exactly. And and we'll just link to it. And the one thing about especially the CCA is that, you know, it's, you know, there's regulations that require us to make sure that we do the outreach that we said we were going to do right. in our outreach and education plan. Right. So we have to do everything that was in there. And it's pretty robust. It's, uh, there's a lot. Yeah. So this is just like another place to put the information. So um, hopefully people right. will start getting more familiar with the site and will think to come here for getting updates and getting information. Um, Tony and Michael, do you know what the CCA, what we mean by a CCA? Uh, what does it stand for? Um, community <laughs> choice aggregation. Okay. So yes, I do know, I, I was like, I know, I've heard of it, but yes, community <laughs> choice aggregation. I, yeah, I generally know what that means, but specifics. It's basically <laughs> municipal power. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's it gives the um the uh, the community an opportunity to have more uh control over their electricity supply. Mm -hmm. So we still would go through um so Amherst uses is 
Eversource is our utility. So the energy is still distributed through Eversource, but the supply yeah. itself, we have more, more control over where we get that from. And that means we have more control over the amount of green content uh, and we can potentially offer residents different options. So um, that application to become a community choice aggregation is currently being reviewed by the Department of Public Utilities. And we are hoping to hear back and be able to launch this program sooner than we anticipated initially. Um, but we're also, we're working with um, with Pelham, the town of Pelham and the city of Northampton. Many communities do this on their own, but we're, uh, we're kind of working with them in part because we had a group of residents that um, advocated for doing an intermunicipal community choice aggregation. So that's what we've done. Um, okay, thank you so much, Stephanie. Are there other questions about the dashboard or? Comments for Stephanie or anything you want to see? Are you good? No, I mean, it's pretty impressive in my mind. I really like the drop down list on the CARP and specific aspects that that kind of like lists it very clear and concise of what of what the tasks are at hand. So I thought that was really cool. I looked at it earlier today. So Oh great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I mean the whole idea is really to be user friendly for the public. Right, so people who don't know a lot of the information will, should be able to get on here and have a better understanding of what it is we're doing and what we're talking about. I'll just say a big thank you to Stephanie for uh, all the, the time and effort and hard work and many months of work uh, to get this um, get this up. Uh, yeah. Great, to, great to have it. Thank you, Duane. I mean, for me, it was more getting, um, I'm going to stop sharing if that's okay. Um, for me, it was more getting the information to KLA. Um, it was a lot of meetings and a lot of verifying information and then reviewing content. But I mean, they obviously, they really, I, I can't really take credit for, you know, some well, for the content, but really they, I mean, they worked closely with me, but, you know. Yeah. They they sort of had the idea, the vision of how we could use our CARP to sort of break this yeah. all out. To organize it. That's great. And organize it. Yeah, it's great. I'm really happy with how it came out. Leveraging a lot of good work by Laura and the original members of the, and Dwayne, I guess. And the original Absolutely. Of the UK. Right. It really yes. does. I feel like it was all of your, all of the committee's hard work you know, which was a collective collaborative effort, because that's also reflects the town staff too. Um, everybody's work is reflected here. Yeah. All right, so if we have finished with the sustainability, oh, go ahead, Laura, sorry. Yeah, no, thanks, Stephanie, I agree with everybody. Um, is there, keeping in mind, of course, you know, that you're down some staff on comms, is there a plan to, kind of release this in any way publicly or mm. do a post about it or I did there was so there mm. was a press release done and so it was in the Amherst Indie it was in the Gazette I think the recorder and it was on the town's website on Monday and then I went back today and it was gone so I've asked IT to make sure that they get that back up again because it needs to be visible for a while so yeah. um, I think this will help. What you're bringing up, Laura, is a good segue into our next topic. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And maybe it could be a, um, we could do like a learning power hour or sound it's called. That's my work. <laughs> what? um, whatever it's called, the education series, um, we could do on this, on the dashboard. Oh, yeah. We could do a little, something for the public or, you know, alternatively, we could also just, again, play the same flyer trick, right? Why don't we send a little announcement to post it on your social media, uh, send it to your, you know, to your local community groups, um, do whatever you can to get the word out that this thing is up and just let people play around on a little, a little bit to see what's going on um, might be useful. Because I don't see the press releases either. <laughs> I don't... Uh, 
Yeah, they were. I mean, again, it got, you know, sent to all of you. Yeah. Um, it, I know, I know that it went out in the press cause I saw it. Um, and it was featured prominently on the town's website for about two days. <laughs> so I've asked that it go back up again. So I think th that'll help too. Was the link in our packet? Yes. Well, That's the, it. yes, because the press release is in your packet Yeah. Okay. and the press release has the link. Oh, okay. Okay. How did I miss that message from, uh, Hmm. It says press release. I just didn't download it for some reason. My fault. I usually just download everything and stick it in a folder with today's date on it. Um, but somehow I missed this one. Okay. I, I, anyway, it's easy to find by Googling. So mm -hmm. um, good. All right. I will look at that press release later and send it off to my, uh, put it on my social media, such as it is. <laughs> um, all right. So with that, if there are no other comments, let's move on to the next item, uh, which is a sustain sustainability festival and the letter that was sent to Stephanie that I feel we strongly that we should reply to. Um, so let's see, how should we start? Um, Stephanie, you wanna tell us a little bit about the sustainability festival? Maybe we should start there. Sure. So I, I honestly don't remember what year we're on, but it's maybe like 12 or 13. Um, but we have an annual sustainability festival that's primarily the purpose of it is it, it's an education event. We have vendors, uh, we have vendors that are selling goods and we have entertainment and a stage, but that's really not the point of the festival. The point is really that we have advocacy groups, we have um, state agencies, we have the ECAC, we have town departments, um, we have lots of other folks who all gather on the town common. It's a one day event from 10 to four on a Saturday in April. Um, and I'm sorry, I should have had the date right off the top of my head, but um, it's usually like the third Saturday in April, right around Earth Day. It's always right around Earth Day. Um, and so, you know, we've been doing it for quite some time, but uh, we did stop during COVID and last year was the first year that we had it up and running again. Um, before COVID, the last event that we did before COVID, we had over a hundred vendors. Um, so it was a very robust event. Um, then after COVID, um, the Amherst Farmers Market, which has been meeting on Spring Street on Saturdays for well over 40 years now, um, had moved the the market is actually on the common now. So we actually have to share the space with them. So we can't have a hundred vendors. So last year's event was really scaled down. I think there were maybe about 45 vendors. Uh, we still had the stage and we still had the entertainment. We still had a central demonstration area. We had, you know, where we had folks, um, like we had folks from the community garden come out and do some demonstrations on gardening, um, practices that you can do and you know we always offer an opportunity for groups from UMass to come and do some kind of a workshop um, during the day so um, we had all of that last year it was just scaled back a bit so we had probably like 45 and I would imagine I haven't sent I was waiting for this meeting but I am going to be reaching out to all the vendors again um, I usually have a list of folks and I just go back to the list from the previous year uh, so I'll be reaching out to all those folks again. And, um, you know, I, I think, I think to the point of the letter, it's, uh, I, I mean, it is, it's a lot, but it's not impossible. And especially at this point, I've been doing it for so long. Um, it's just the two weeks before that got particularly crazy. And then I'm very, very focused on it. But prior to that, it's mostly email communication and coordination, um, but it, you know, it is kind of the primary focus of at least that one month. You know, when April starts, it's very much about the event. Um, but it's not all. I have time to do other things. Um, right. It's not like all other work completely stops. The only time it really completely stops is like the week of. Then I might have things that I've got to really focus for the event. But um, it's usually pretty well attended. Folks look forward to it. Um, the Some of the vendors have been with me prior to the Sustainability Festival. We used to have a fall renewable energy fair. That's really kind of how it started. And we did that for about four years. Um, 
and that was in October. So then we sort of wrapped that up and did this sustainability festival that was kind of bigger and we moved it to, to be around Earth Day to replace the Earth Day event. So it's been around for a while. Some of the vendors have been with me since the Renewable Energy Fair. Um, I can think of a handful that have been there every year since the beginning. So um, people enjoy it. It's a really feel good event. And I think it has a purpose, um, especially as we have some of this programming. I think it's a really great place to, uh, you know, have a table set up for the CCA, have a table set up for the heat pump initiative that's being launched, have a table, you know, set up with a computer to show people how to navigate the dashboard. That's this is like the first, you know, this year, especially we have some really thing, big things that we really want to promote. Also, um, we're looking to get our bike share program, Valley Bike, up and running again. So, again, we want to probably try and have our vendor there um, once we secure one <laughs> um, to sort of promote memberships to get people to sign up for Valley Bike. So, you know, it's not it's not a frivolous kind of just feel good thing. It's really it's got a purpose. And um, and it's a fun way to get people who typically might not come to a workshop, you know. If you tell people we're going to have a workshop on CCA, that might sound like the yeah. most boring way for somebody to spend a Saturday afternoon. But if you say we have a sustainability festival and, hey, did you know about, and we can rope people in and tell them about it, you know, it, great. It's a, yeah, it's a, it's a big draw. I think, I think for me, the, you know, Amherst in the summer and in the spring and early fall is every weekend there's something going on in the comments. And people just come out to be there and listen to the music, look at the vendors. And I think this is really important because the, you know, the, the problem is there, there's sort of two sorts of people that are involved. Well, you know, insofar as the energy transition goes, there's already a certain percentage of the public, I think it's something like 30% maybe, that sort of knows that they have to do something and have a vague idea what they're supposed to do, but have very little idea for where to start. You know, this is what the energy electricity coach thing is all about, right? How do you, how do you, help people get started where do you start with the energy transition where do you how do you get a heat pump you know what does that even mean um so there are people who already know that climate change is a problem and want to do something and don't know where to start and then there's the vast majority of people who know that climate change is a problem and just haven't had any time to think about it at all you know they the, there's the folks that want to help that think they have some idea where to start maybe and there's the folks that just yeah there's climate change what can i do i can't do anything about that um <laughs> And, and those are the ones that I think, you know, both those, those sets of people, the ones that really don't know anything at all, um, don't realize that they can make a difference, and the ones that, you know, want to visit a mass save person so they can figure out how they get an energy audit, or what is a heat pump anyway, and how do I find one, and who's a contractor, and they just want to ask their questions. I, I think it's really important to have a forum where they can just show up and do that in an informal sort of way. Um, I also think that there's a different sort of message. So one of the things I've been getting out of this work I've been doing with Rewiring America recently is if, if you haven't, I'm gonna recommend a book by Saul Griffiths called Electrify or Electrify Everything. I think it's Electrify. And he's got a great attitude. He points out, and I was gonna make some suggestions. I'll probably write to you separately, um, Stephanie, for small changes in language on the, on the website. Um, you know, he makes the point that the energy, the, the energy transition that most older folks are familiar with is the 70s, right? And, and it, it meant deprivation, and it meant higher prices, and it meant being cold in the winter and driving slowly on the roads, right? Um, <laughs> and that's not what's going on this time. This is about better, more comfortable, less troublesome vehicles that don't need, you know, oil changes. Um, it's, it's about, it's about a healthier home. It's about less expensive, you know, paying less for your, for your electricity, for your, you know, for your heat. Um, it's about improving our lifestyles. And I think that getting that sort of message out is something that's very hard to do. Um, especially when you're fighting lots of media that seem to say otherwise. Uh, and it's the sort of thing you can do at a festival, you know? It's, it comes sort of naturally at a festival. This is this is a fun thing, right? And this is why. <laughs> um, so I just, uh, yeah, if you haven't read Saul Griffith's Electrified book, it's I'm still working my way through it, but it, I get the message. I'm about halfway through and it's like, okay, it's getting repetitive already, but I understand what he's saying and it's important, um, important message to get across. So anyway, that's what I've been thinking lately. It makes, I, I just, yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. 
Any questions about the sustainability festival before we get to the letter and proposed response? Okay, um, so uh, one one comment though, Stephanie, I, I, however you do it is fine with me, but uh, to, is it one thing maybe to consider is doing it on a Sunday instead of a Saturday to avoid the, have you thought about that at all or is that not? Yeah, possible? no, I, I don't, a Sunday's not gonna be better than a Saturday. Okay, all right. Okay, never mind. just a thought. Um, all right, so uh, in that case, let, let's move on to this letter that arrived. Um, from signed by Lydia Vernon Jones, but with the sort of an odd signature that just said it was from the leadership of, without saying that it was the work of a particular group. Um, should we share that or has everyone seen it? Should we just go to a proposed response? How do folks wanna do this? Maybe just go to the, go ahead, Don. To me, it's difficult to respond to something if I don't know what it is I'm responding to. Okay, it was in the packet, but let me let me. Let me oh, it was in the packet. I got the response, but it was the letter in the packet, the original letter. It was it Gmail? Yeah. Uh, I it was it. sent in the. It was yeah. It was sent it was in like your an packet email that went out. Ah, uh, an earlier email. Okay, I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, um, no, but it was attached as an attachment, but it, it's an email file. I don't know. So it yeah, looked, the icon to, looks a little bit different. Yeah, you have to actually open it from within your email or it's very hard oh, to see. Yeah. So if I can find the packet, let me just find the packet. Um, I've got the packet. Oh, there it is, email. Yeah, if you click on it from within your email, usually it pops right up. Yep, there it is. Where? where? Um, it's in the email from... I've got it's Stephanie's it's, email. It says ECAC meeting packet for 13124 yep. is the subject. And it says email message from Lydia Vernon Jones. I see that. Can you click on Attached to it at the bottom yep. should be message from, from the Amherst Climate Amherst. Justice Alliance. Ah, uh, that's it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay, it's in the packet. There we go. No message selected. I gotta open it up in email. Yeah, you have to open it up from there. It is okay. I got it. Thanks. In short, I could just say that that the request is that uh, so so last year when there's a little history here, which is last year when the sustainability sustainability festival planning was going on, we were also waiting for um, the CCA. The CCA paperwork was in Pelham's hands, and we were just waiting to get it back. And some folks were bent out of shape because it was taking so long and somehow that got translated into, oh, it must be that Stephanie's too busy with the fair. And that wasn't the case at all. And I think that might be where some of this is coming from. But basically the leadership group of the Amherst Climate Justice Alliance uh, is asking that Stephanie not put her time and energy or any other staff or interns into a sustainability fair again this spring. Um, and they are, they think that this is not a priority, should not be a priority. It's been necessary in the past as a way for Amherst and surrounding town folks to wake up to climate change and other environmental issues. Um, it helped advertise local environmental groups and sustainable businesses, but they don't think it's, they think it's outlived its usefulness. Um, and I disagree pretty strongly with that and was pretty upset <laughs> at the, at the um, letter itself. So I felt like we should um, respond uh, in support of Stephanie and the Sustainability Festival. Um, so this has got a, yeah, I think it's just sort of unfortunate. I, I do think that it requires a response uh, in particular because, you know, the email was sent to Dave Zymek as well, who I think is Stephanie's direct report, right? Report, you report to Dave Zymek. So I think it's important for, you know, Dave and others to hear that and, and Lydia Vernon Jones and this leadership here to hear whoever leadership is. Um, it bothers me that it's just leadership and it's not like the group 
elected to send this note. It's some little, you know, some little group of people who we don't know elected to send this note. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I, I think we should respond to them directly with a copy to Dave Zymek and, and leave it at that. And maybe perhaps draft a separate letter from ECAC at some point in the near future, just lauding the Sustainability Festival and encouraging people to come and learn. Um, but that would be, I think, for a little later. So with that in mind, um, I drafted a response, which Stephanie has also looked at now. Lori, just so you know, I don't know if you can see it. Laura has her hand up. Oh, sorry, Laura, go ahead. I didn't notice. My apologies. Yeah, no, thanks, Lori. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I think this warrants a response. I also share your frustration with the lack of transparency. This is not the first time some incarnation of this group has sent ECAC letters in the past, it was me getting berated, um, <laughs> written by some leadership group with no names, which I find to be right. inappropriate. Um, I also take issue with the tone of this letter. I think it's extremely patronizing, even though it's written by a woman. Um, so <laughs> I would say, the only comment I would say to your response is that when I look up the information from the sustainability fair last year, it does say at the very bottom that their financial sponsor was Berkshire gas. <laughs> so I'm assuming that's what's being referred to. Um, I do not think that that constitutes the claims made in this letter. Um, but I just wanted to flag that because we should probably speak to that. Since Maybe we should address that as well, um, just to let folks know. But I think that was through, I mean, the problem is that Mass Save is funded by Berkshire Gas and Eversource and all the energy yeah. companies. I think, right. I think you might just need to mention that specific Berkshire Gas specifically, since okay. that's the site. And it, in the past, to be honest, it was both Eversource and Berkshire Gas. In fact, in the history of this festival, they have been the two primary sponsors, which we couldn't have had it without them. And to quote um, Senator Markey, who spoke at the MMA conference, uh, in response to someone asking a similar question about what happens when utilities and others uh, who are contributing to the fossil fuel industry want to sponsor something, Ed Marquis said, why wouldn't we take their money? <laughs> right. So why wouldn't we take their money? They've been, I, I had, I, there was a several years ago where all of a sudden, I don't know, someone saw the flood, the banner up above main street or uh, South Pleasant street and was all up in arms and got several people to reach out and everyone started emailing and was angry and said, why are we having utilities sponsor these events? Because they're the ones who gave us the money to do it. We couldn't do it without it. And as, as Lori noted, the representation from those two um, companies was the mass save table, the yeah. mass save groups, you know, that administer the program. So, you know, that's, that's who we have there. It's not, we're not promoting, the fossil fuel industry we're promoting the mass safe program yeah i i agree with that i think yeah i mean i think we're operating if we were operating in a system with by which we did it we weren't in a monopoly with eversource and berkshire gas maybe that would be different um berkshire gas also does not supply new gas to our area anyway so it's not like they're trying to get new customers um, I think we can be honest about, I mean, there's, there's certainly, um, so, so the free advertising seems a little bit of a, of a false claim because we don't have a choice. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a gas hookup, you use Berkshire gas, if you use electricity, you use Eversource other, except using mass save to save energy and doing solar, both of which Eversource has to put money into because of the state yeah. requirements, right? So anyway. Don and then Dwayne. Yeah, thanks. Um, 
I, I, I don't recall. I mean, the advertising, uh, Laura, is, do, is there other than a booth that says Math Save? You know, is it is it simply the name Berkshire Gas or Mass Save on the on the bottom that that we consider to be the advertising? Because I, I think it's on the banner too. It's on the banner that goes up along the street, and we have to do that if they're giving. You have to advertise your sponsors. You have to put who's sponsoring your event. Um, so that's on the. That's really the biggest. You know. Um, most visible display of who's sponsoring the event is the banner, but the day it's on the website. And then it's also on the day of the event, we have the sandwich boards that are on either end of the common. Um, and at the bottom, there's a thank you to our sponsors. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, to me, I think people, and, and maybe Lydia is speaking to this, they, they confuse um, sponsorship or money with some sort of ability to control or direct um what what's going to take place at the festival and th that just doesn't exist at all um yeah and I, I, and i don't know but i i, I don't i just don't see any problem with taking berkshire gas's money to put on a festival if they don't have any control over what i mean the whole festival is about getting away from berkshire gas so and to be honest, that might change this year because Eversource had been sponsoring us up until last year or the last event. So they may not sponsor us anymore. And that might be true with Berkshire Gas too. I don't know uh, if they'll fund this any further, um, in which case then I'm using sustainability funds and um, it's not, I and before people get all upset about using sustainability funds, it's not really that much. Yeah. It's, it's, um, at this point, I would say we're maybe at the most five to seven thousand dollars to put on the event, but um, it might even be less than that now, to be honest, because we will have a smaller event. Um, so yeah. it's not it's not a lot. It's really not a lot. Maybe we can also look to other sources for fundraising this year. Maybe we can all brainstorm on that a little bit. Ask yeah, around. it's just been nice to have two big reliable sources over the years they have been consistent for over a decade and it did yeah. require a whole lot of work to do that because that's getting a sponsorship you know getting all those sponsors it's a lot more work and then that would be a lot more work for me or if you all want to do it but it's a lot more work if we can just get the one sponsor one yeah. or two well the other big players in town of course are umass and amherst college maybe and both have a stake in sustainability so maybe one of the one or both of those would like to put a little money into it well, because the town taps those resources for other things. Yeah. So I, it's, I don't, not Amherst yet. College actually did used to. It was way in the beginning, actually my position, before my position was our official position, no. uh, it was funded by Hampshire College, Amherst College, and Eversource. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Interesting. Okay, so do we want to, uh, I'm going to share the response letter now. Oh, Dwayne, sorry, sorry, sorry Dwayne. Uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, I was just going to mention one, a couple of things. One is, first of all, I think, you know, one of the reasons I love living in, in town is uh, you go in the town commons on a beautiful spring day um, to be with the community. Uh, and so in my in my mind, there's no question whatsoever that we should have the sustainability festival. It's one of the highlights of the year. Uh, provided it's a nice spring. <laughs> uh, so, and, and then just on the merit to this letter, I, I would give, you know, that, that that Stephanie's, they shouldn't be telling Stephanie how they, she should use her time. That's, she can use her own judgment on that. Um, second, um, this is an educational opportunity uh, on sustainability. It's not talking about the past. It's talking about the future. And then the greenwashing, I would just, you know, one thing maybe, Stephanie, is that, um, you know, but this energy transition, we need the utility company. We need poles and wires. We need more transmission. So I have no problem with um, uh, Eversource. I'm not sure about Berkshire Gas, but Eversource, you know, they're, they're the ones that keep the poles and wires up in the transmission line. So um, uh, I have no problem them being part of this energy transition. Um, and um, they are, and importantly, they don't pay for mass save rate payers pay for mass save <laughs> um, and so uh, they they administer it oh under the oversight of the state 
Um, and so it's an educational opportunity, I think, also uh, to um, for people to recognize or to learn about what the role of these companies are. I'm not suggesting um, they don't have other bottom lines and so forth. But I am wondering, Stephanie, if the sponsorship money that they're providing is coming from mass save dollars. I don't know if it is, but if it is, uh, would they would they be willing to not have their name to mass save as the sponsor? Um, I don't. I don't think that's the case. I think it, the okay. this the sponsorship is coming from the utility. From the corporate, okay. yeah. Okay. But but the util but they're the ones who, you know, administer the mass save program. So that's why they ensure that someone from you know one of their um, companies that that help administer the program on their behalf is is there. So we've had Center for Eco Technology there several years running, um, and sometimes they would have a table themselves. But when they did, they would have a table with at the time you know like LED lighting. So yeah, exactly. you know there was a, they had a company that they worked with yeah. for years that would come and and provide really affordable LED lighting and lamps. The lamps were $10 and they were usually pretty nice. Um, you know, so. And just in terms of other, other sponsors, I'm, you know, and maybe ECAC could help you out on that, but I'm thinking mm -hmm. of, you know, the likes, if it's $5,000, I mean, UMass five comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Um, and then some of the solar companies, um, yeah. that we've yeah, been talking UMass to. five makes a lot from the heat loans, right? So maybe they would be mm -hmm. yep. interested. That's a good idea. Yeah, I can do some of the more of that, but I don't have a lot of time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> no, um, I, I, and also because, um, COVID happened, one of the, you know, there was a year that the festival got put on hold. So, uh, there's still some residual funds from, I'm very frugal when it comes to the festival because yeah. I anticipated that there would be a time when the support from the utilities might go away and Eversource did. So I do have some funding still in a pot that's specifically for the festival. And I would say it's probably like half of it, you know, for this year's event. Um, next year, we might want to do more and start earlier, you know, um, depending on what we do, you know, next year. Lori Michael has his hand up. I just have um, a question. Okay, go when, ahead, Michael. I guess in terms of timeline, when do you start, Stephanie, when do you start reaching out for sponsorships or when do those responses start coming in if if we were to investigate alternate funding opportunities? Mm -hmm. How much time does that really give us for this year? Well, um, you could start now. I mean, I've the thing for me with the utilities is that because I had worked with them for over a decade, I could send them you know, requests in February, at the end of February, and we knew that it was happening in April and they would just send me a, a check for the event. So, um, but I, now would really be the time. Now would be the time and we would want to know how much we have really by the end of next month. Yeah. So we'd have about a month, maybe beginning of March at the latest. That's I would I would give it like four, four to five weeks. So do you mind, is there any reason why we as ECAC members can't just, you know, inquire at UMass 5 if they'd be willing to make a donation toward the, and then put them in contact with you if they are? Yeah, so just direct them to me. It. Yeah, if you okay. if you all are willing to do some outreach and engage, even if one yeah. person, you know, you know, each of you did one location, yeah, or even four of you did one location, it's, it's more, it's enough. I've done this sort of thing before for workshops and it's pretty easy to just ask. So um, I don't mind, you know, I can reach out to UMass 5, for example. Sure. Figure out who to ask there. Um, oh, sorry. And if people are asking for amounts like for a larger organization, um, you know, I, I find it challenging to cobble together like $500 donations. That's really not all that helpful. So um, a bigger chunk of like, you know, 2,500 or 3,000 is more what we're looking for. And a couple of those will get us You're easily done. through this year. Yep. Okay, good. Is, oh, sorry. Uh, okay. Is there like a s email or pamphlet or brochure that you would send out to sponsors or? Um, I, I think that, if you just, 
sorry, Michael, I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, if you just have the contact, then they should get in touch with me and I would send them a okay. letter because the letter should probably come from the town. Yeah, that makes sense. You can certainly look up the, um, there's probably a, a web link somewhere for last year's festival, for example, um, that you could use as a, or as a, we'll find something from last year's festival, Stephanie, that we can send around just so people know what we're talking about. Yep. Yep. Laura? Yeah, just on um, UMass 5 in particular, and I can connect with you offline, Lori, because I've had some conversations actually with um, the president there about sustainability stuff. Um, they they may even want, and maybe they have in the past, Stephanie, but they may even want to have a booth. They have the heat loan, the zero interest heat loan. They have bike loans. I don't think people actually realize that you can get a bike loan through UMass 5 um, and a couple other things that I think would benefit from getting the word out about. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they've tabled at the event in the past. Um... And we've certainly, I mean, we've certainly done a lot of outreach, um, you know, some organizations that seem like they would be a natural fit don't always want a table. Right. So, you know, um, it's sometimes harder to get them, but I mean, but any, they are more than well, welcome. Any organization business is welcome to have um, a table at the event that's local. Okay, um, so if there are no more comments, what I'd sort of like to do is just bring up the response letter and as much as I, uh, this, you know, just spend a few minutes of our time wordsmithing to make sure it sounds about right. There was already one suggestion from Laura I'm trying to figure out how to include, but let me go ahead and share this, okay? So we can get a, we're gonna, what I'm gonna want I think is a, a vote to see if we are all okay with this letter so that when I send it, it's not coming from leadership, it's coming from ECAC. And anybody can look up who that is. Um, so uh, let me go ahead and bring this up. And I think this is the one that you edited, Laura, um, Stephanie. No, it's not because it says fair and not festival. So let me fix that, I'm sorry. Um, let me stop sharing and find it again. I thought I had it. Um, don't save. Um, hold on a minute. Uh, I need to go back to my email then because I thought I had. Um, Do you want me to share, Lori? I think. Yeah. I why don't right you go now. ahead and share it? Can you edit it as we're talking? Um. Yes. Okay. In that case, go ahead and share it. What to say? Yep. Hold on. I think the one suggestion I heard is that we should somehow get Berkshire gas name in there and maybe indicate that mass save is paid by ratepayers. And I had made a little tweak to the one I was editing and then I just, it just killed it. So I can probably fix it once you. Hold on, I'm almost there. Okay. Hopefully this doesn't take us too long. Um, if you can jump right to the last paragraph, let's start at the bottom, because mm -hmm. that's where uh, the participation of, I would say specifically, the second sentence in the last paragraph, the partic participation of Berkshire Gas and Eversource. So Berkshire Gas, because oh, Eversource I say, is not. I, no? Uh, well, Eversource is no longer so. Right. So I was going to say that while the festival has in the past been funded by Berkshire Gas and Eversource. Okay, hold on. I was going to add a phrase before that. So let's fix that. Right. While the, the festival. Um, mm -hmm. I would use this. Or while in the past, while the festival has, comma, in the past, been funded by Berkshire Gas and Eversource. Comma. Their participation 
in recent years has been limited to mass save. which is funded by ratepayers, as someone pointed out. Mm -hmm. That mass save is administered through energy companies. And I got the hand moved over one there. <laughs> um, administered, sorry. Through the energy companies is not ideal. But it is how business is done in the state, and folks who want rebates and incentives need to know how to navigate it. Yep. Meaning mass save. Um, so do you want me to scroll up or is that I mean that was the only change that you needed? That was the change that I was noting from the comments that people were making. Um, does that does that, is that what you wanted to see, Laura? Something like that? Whoops, you're, you're muted. Yeah, I just anticipate if we don't mention Berkshire Gas, we'll get a response back that. Right. Well, they're possibly. mentioned. <laughs> now they're mentioned. Berkshire right. Gas yeah. I, I mean, this is picky, but I, I, I just don't like the word while. I think if the word was although, um Hello. it's a it, it's a little bit more powerful yeah. i think also not to um <clears throat> be picky or or uh, do too much editing but i think ratepayers is one word oh. um and then also uh i guess i would suggest which is funded by ratepayers and overseen by the state funded by ratepayers and overseen by the state Anything else? So there's nothing else in that paragraph. Let's go back to the top and just take a quick look. Okay. Is there, is there a reason that you capitalize sustainability festival in sentence one and not in sentence two? Probably should be fest capitalized everywhere since we're talking about the sustainability festival. Yeah, I can just go back and take care of that piece yeah. after. Okay. So let's just make a note to do that. I'll make a note. In the last paragraph, there was the use of the word festival alone that should probably be capitalized as well. Oh, uh, we say we have a heat pump program that will facilitate. We don't have it yet. So we should say something like we will have, maybe, or we anticipate. Or we are developing. Yep. Something like that. Oh, the new sustainability dashboard has been launched. Yep. Um, instead of are in the works also, are also in the works, I think reads a little better for us uh, in the next sentence, reopening of the electric bike program and new charging stations are also in the works. Okay. 
Can I just, um, cause we say festival a lot. Uh, can I just say great discussions they had while attending? While attending, yep, sure. It's a little long-winded, but it's what I had time for. <laughs> the less time I have, the slightly longer-winded things get. I think it's I think it's clear enough. So if there's yeah, if there's and and I can I will sign it. I, I usually so I did this when I sent the letter to the Gazette. I signed it, Lori Goldner for ECAC, and the headline was Lori Goldner so <laughs> idling in schools, and then the ECAC was at the bottom. So this is a personal letter, so we won't have that problem. Um, I'm not sure whether I should just sign it as ECAC or Lori Goldner for ECAC or all of our names. Um, I think normally, you know, I don't. I, I feel fine signing it as chair. I just want to make sure that everyone knows it's from well, all of us if we accept it. Can I suggest maybe it's more powerful if you all have your names on it? Sure. So those of us who are here if today, you all are willing to have your names on it. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah, I would okay. say either that or provide a link to the website where it shows all of our names um is also an, a, a different option if, if we don't want to do that um the only other point i'll make is that i thought it was either duane or, or don sorry for not remembering but someone made a good point about the fact that these sponsors don't dictate what is included or not in during at the festival like they don't have any say on the content right um we may want to just like add that point at the bottom and how spent sponsorship money is important. Yeah. Um, Do you, um, maybe we can add, maybe we can edit that. Um, just let us edit that into this letter. Yeah, I think that's fine. Because I think we okay. need to sort of think about how to word that all. There's one and, sentence that probably has to become two. <laughs> and that might be a little hard for us to do um, in limited time online. Um, so if that's okay, we'll make that that change and the change for the capitals and festival. Um, is there a move? I think we need a, a voice of individual vote for this. Uh, folks want to yep. put their name on it. I'm going to so, stop sharing. Yeah. Is there a move to go ahead and send this letter with our names on the bottom? Laurie, so you should probably be the one to send it. So I'll. Okay. Yeah, I'll send make it. Make the final edits. Yeah. Um, I do think actually, rather than linking, I think it would just be good to list your names. Yeah. So let's, let's, if that's okay, let's have a motion to that effect. Yeah. Are we okay um, committing, uh, since we have a quorum, committing the names of the members who are not here? You could just, um, I, I, think I mean, you you're sending it on behalf of the committee. And the majority, the, if you all vote, you're the majority vote. So essentially the committee is supporting it. I feel a little bad putting on the names. I, I think we should sign for ECAC, but only the names of the people who are here voting on it yep. because, okay, if that's all right. Yeah, or you could also just ask the few that aren't here if they have any problem with having their names included. I, I can they may want to. Yeah. So. That's a good idea. I will I will take care of the final edits, Stephanie, if you'll send me okay. the version you have now. And I will we'll also do. take care of getting of contacting um the it's two or three. Steve Stella's not here and it's Steve Stella Jesse's and Jesse. And Steve's not here. So three folks who weren't here to see if it's if it's uh, okay with them. And with that, do we have a motion? <laughs> I'll provide a motion that we um send the letter on behalf of ECAC and have a sign it that uh, Lori has um, drafted and we all just reviewed as, as amended today. Second it. Alan's got a second. So I think we need a voice vote. You want to do okay. that? Stephanie? Yep. So uh, in no particular order, Goldner. Yes. Breger. Yes. Allison. Yes. McElrath. Yes. Issing. Yes. Drucker. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, now let's get back to real work. <laughs> uh, you know, stuff like that, I feel like we have to respond to, but I, it does, I think, take away a little bit from what we would rather be working on, which is maybe drafting something to promote the sustainability festival, which will grow out of this letter, I think. So uh, hopefully it hasn't been, um, the effort will, will be used again in that sense. So staff updates, we have 15 minutes, roughly 15 minutes left. Um, go ahead, Stephanie. I won't give a lot. Um, you already know about Sunbug. Um, hey. So we had a few responses uh, to the RFP that was sent out for the bike share program. So um, we're going to be reviewing those and hopefully um, finding a provider to get it launched again this season. Um, also, I wanted to announce that Legal Counsel has approved the release of the RFP for the heat pump program. Mm -hmm. So um, that finally, that literally just came in on Friday. So all of this time that we were waiting I was not sitting on it. It was really legal counsel review, um, but it was complicated because it was ARPA funding. And so they had to make sure that we had mechanisms to deal with a financial piece. Um, anyway, I am going to review it one more time though. And I need to go over it with um, the person who's overseeing um, the ARPA funds and the ARPA program here in town. And just to make sure there were a few things she wanted me to, to edit and add. So I want to make sure that I put those in. She's okay with it. And then I will be contacting Lori, who um, has been pretty much the, the person representing ECAC in this initiative. And I'll have Lori take one last look at it and then it'll go out. So all of that sounds like a long time, but I'm hoping that, you know, by midweek next week, we'll be getting this thing out. Right. And again, the point of this is to fund folks who don't have the money to front for a heat pump system is to find a way to fund heat pumps in um, low income households. Correct. In Amherst. Yay. Anything else? That Those were the quick ones that I wanted to make sure you knew about. Staff updates or are there ECAC member updates? Anyone have any updates? Go ahead, Dwayne. Uh, not really an update for me, but I just, um, I'm not sure what this state's doing, sending this email out the day before, but there's an um, uh, email about uh, a presentation from the state, um, either tomorrow, February 1st, six o'clock in the evening, or February 2nd at one o'clock uh, from the Climate Office, the Massachusetts Office of Climate Innovation and Resilience. I believe that's... Um, Hoffner's um, office, um, uh, but they're providing a um, uh, a, a, a um, presentation and community engagement session for input um, on the um, climate pollution reduction program uh, and, and grant, I guess, uh, that they have, uh, and they would like our like your input. Uh, so I'm not sure if other people got this um, um, announcement. I don't think I got that one. So why don't you go ahead and forward it to all of us, Dwayne? Or forward it to Stephanie. Can I do that? Or I'll send it. Stephanie, did you get this? Uh, I think I I think I just saw it this morning. Yeah, so. I did. Uh, and as I looked at it, it's like tomorrow? You're telling I, me it's tomorrow? <laughs> for tomorrow? Two <laughs> days. The warning. You have, two, you have 48 hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so um, right. just send it to me anyway, Dwayne, just yeah. to make sure. Yeah. Right. Okay. And um, I'll go. I, yes. go ahead, Laura. I don't know if it's an announcement or just a, a thought. Um, well, first, um, something that has been kind of on my plate, but also on the back burner for a while has been this idea of figuring out how to do some outreach around so build environment solar i mean we had the environment we had the educational session last time last week's meeting um but the idea was that we would help some of the ngos communities buildings other people that are now qual get are qualified for this direct pay from the inflation reduction act mm -hmm. to make sure they know about it and um know how to access it. And maybe if they looked at solar in the past and found it was too expensive because they're non-tax paying entities, they could benefit now. So um, 
I think when we looked at it before, it was a little bit too early. So maybe I'll put myself back on the agenda here to look again. And maybe it's something we can do at the sustainability fair um, or figure out other ways to do it. Um, which brings me to just the thought for you, Lori, to consider, which is whether or not we should try to do an ECAC mini retreat of some sort. Um, now that we have our two new members, yep. um, I was going to say, Stella, something. yeah, it might be hard with Stella leaving, going on leave, but it'd be great if we could get together in person. Um, I agree. Just do some brainstorming on how we bring our new members into the fold. What areas we want to focus on moving forward uh, and all that good stuff all right i will uh work with stephanie i guess to try to find a time for that and or times that might work for that but i agree that's something that i was going to mention too that i think now that we have our full complement of members it's time to do another retreat and brainstorming about what we want to do next and how we want to do it i'll send out a doodle poll actually with some dates and times but laurie i'll coordinate that with you great thanks um, any other updates? Uh, items for the next agenda. We have the um, uh, transportation update from Stella. Perhaps there will be something to say about heat pumps. That might be nice. Um, something more to say. So those things can go on the regular updates, I guess. Um, we are having, it's a short meeting next time because we will be having a presentation by Sunbug, which we're all gonna advertise. So that's on everybody's agenda for the next two weeks, the next week. <laughs> um, what else needs to be the, uh, maybe to talk a little bit more about a retreat when we can do that, firm up a time. Um, so we did have that, Public comment from Sarah Ross. Um, I don't know if that's an item for next agenda or maybe we just need to connect with her about. I can reach out to Sarah and we can find a time, but I don't think the next meeting with a education series, one hour meeting, that might not be a good time to do it, but maybe the following one. Yeah. But it depends yeah. on her availability too. So let's put that down for a future meeting, but maybe not the next one. Yeah. And I think it would depend. Like, I think we would want probably a resolution that they've drafted to look at. So um, it, that also right. made her schedule. Yep, the draft resolution would be a good thing to look at. I agree. Um, what else do we have? Um, hopefully we'll have some more updates on PACE, but that can be done, I think, as a uh, staff update from Stephanie maybe, or Don, if you have something, just let me know and we'll stick it on there. I'm sure other things will come up in the next week. <laughs> but if anyone has anything they want to see on the agenda, just send it to me. Ideas for things we should be talking about or doing. Um, all right, and I think that brings us to public comments. Martha. <laughs> Okay. Hey, thank you. And first of all, uh, congratulations on the sustainability dashboard. I haven't personally looked at it yet, but it looks terrific. I, I really think that's excellent. Uh, so congratulations. And uh, we need to spread the word and, and hope it will be something that is really useful for us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next thing, just want to point out, there was a big article in yesterday's Wall Street Journal on page three, all about heat pumps and how and how good they are. And boy, they work at low temperatures and everything. So that was good. Yeah. And then I wanted to say a word about the Sustainability Festival. I would preface it by saying I never saw Lydia's letter and it's not about that at all. Um, last year, you know, I was there and it was partly the weather wasn't that great, but it seemed like there weren't all that many people. And I just wondered if we were really saving any souls. And I, it seemed a little, what shall I say, diffuse maybe. And so I just wondered about suggesting whether uh, we could focus it any more this year somehow on, you know, sort of cluster 
the uh, places where there are ideas of what people can literally do, or you know, maybe kind of a sign of, of here, are the, here are the simple or or whatever things you can do. And also, I didn't see any solar vendors last year. I don't know if there were any, but you know, later I went to the Hadley Asparagus Festival, and there were two or three vendor solar vendors that were, you know, calling people in and handing out brochures and telling how great it was to put it on your rooftop. Uh, and so, I would like to suggest that we really focus on trying to get uh, solar vendors there. And as I say, maybe try to make a little more focus on the the what people can can do and here are your tools aspect uh martha there were solar vendors there 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 have always been every year we've had solar uh, vendors. I, I i walked around but i didn't see them so i guess well yeah. that was just it might just be it was someone i don't think pv squared has been there almost every single event really since the renewable energy fair i can't uh -huh. remember if last year they had a conflict and it was the one year they couldn't make it but there was another solar provider that you probably just didn't know because mm -hmm. um, sometimes we get some other ex obscure yeah. people that show up yes yes okay well i guess the word the, the the best description i can i can make is it seemed diffuse <laughs> i don't know if that answer, that's any help but uh you know any any way that people could be you know pointed a little better or the publicity or something was just um my reaction so yeah we did have people clustered by groups like there were advocacy groups they had specifically asked to be together so oh. advocates were put in one section and we I tried see. to sort of group things that way the uh -huh. town town uh departments like i think leisure services typically has a booth i think they were there with some other town departments yes. Yes. Um, so they they are grouped but um you know I, for many, many years, I made a map. And if you came to the information booth, which is right at the head of it, mm -hmm. um, we had maps and people don't take them. And plus it's more paper. So yes. I've really scaled back on providing yes. that because yes. people yes. don't really take them anyway. So I think people just like walking around for the most part. Um, I, and I don't know how to make that different. I mean, maybe if people had actual signs of who they are, maybe we could make just, you know, signs for each booth we could do that but no. that's going to be more time no no i don't we don't want you to have to you know invest more time that's just anyway that's just my feedback from for whatever it's it's worth they are it's not. it is worth something and very yeah. much appreciated yeah uh, okay well thank you all for all all that you're doing and uh i see you another time <laughs> Thanks, Martha. I appreciate it. I've also been thinking about ways that we can interact more at the, at the sustainability festival. I was thinking now that we have a, we'll have a couple of heat pump coaches by the end of the, <laughs> we can have a heat pump table, you know, just, just offering advice to people on where to start um, or electrify everything table where we could, you know, just talk to people about it. Those were the best conversations I had last year were with people about, you know, what it was possible for them to do that they didn't know about. So that was, that was that was worthwhile well, for me. It would be great if we could get a boat or another provider to actually table at the event. I think yeah. now is the time for them. They need to be doing that kind of thing to get to people. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, maybe even just one of the local like Western Mass heating and cooling, the guy who gave the um, heat pump mm -hmm. talk, maybe, maybe they wanted that. Maybe they want to have a uh, booth there. Well, and whoever our provider ends up being for the heat pump program, yeah. you know, I'm hoping that we can really encourage them to have a presence at the fair, at the festival. All right. So something to talk about more next time, perhaps for the agenda um, as well, uh, talking a little bit about the sustainability festival. Um, all right. So with that, I think we have come to the end, um, which is good because my dog is going to explode if I don't feed him. Mm -hmm. um all right so uh if there's nothing else shall we adjourn move to adjourn second yes and i just want to thank you all yeah. for the time that you spent on that topic on the festival topic yeah. and thank you stephanie for all of your work just go ahead and send me you know the copy of that letter that you have and i'll go we'll do it. all yep. right we'll do take care all, all right. see you in two weeks thanks everybody 
Thanks, all. Bye.